Good morning, family. My name is Judy Maxwell, and I am from the great state of Washington, and I am regional manager for Washington State and Colorado, and my um, recovery birth date is March 2nd, 1997. So I have a few announcements for you before we get started. Welcome to the 2021 Oxford House World Convention. As a reminder, masks must be worn indoors properly, which means over your nose and your mouth. Silence your phone cells during this session. Cell phones, oh boy. <laughs> Did anybody catch that? It's kind of early. <laughs> Okay, be respectful of the colored bracelets and people's contact preference. Keep your QR code on your name badge clear so we can scan you into sessions. The only smoking and vaping area is outside between the ballroom and the parking garage. Don't smoke near the doors and please dispose of butts properly. I don't know if anybody saw, but we had a little fire out there yesterday. <laughs> don't forget to rate the sessions on the convention app. The AA meetings have been moved to National Harbor 3. The NA meetings have been moved to National Harbor 10. Okay, and these are my notes, so I don't get to share those with you. <laughs> All righty, so we have some speakers for you today that are going to let you know about conducting presentations. How many of you out there have conducted presentations? Oh, good. Okay, so some of you will be learning a lot from our our awesome panel up here. So we have Mustafa Elias, Jackie Sledge, Anna Mabel Jones, and James Alston. And I will be reading what they're going to be telling you about today, and then I'll read their bios if I can find them on my phone. It's way early, you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Conducting presentations, Oxford House outreach workers and Oxford House residents and alumni frequently have the opportunity to conduct presentations about Oxford Houses at conferences and meetings, as well as in individual sessions with treatment providers at treatment facilities and penal facilities. The presentations are useful in informing people about Oxford House, its program structure and success in helping residents achieve long-term recovery. The panelists will provide tips on how to do these presentations successfully. Presentations to treatment providers are particularly important. Most individuals recovering from alcoholism or drug addiction initially go through formal treatment programs. Individuals who get into an Oxford house, bless you, following such treatment are generally more likely to achieve successful long-term recovery than if they go directly back to the community after treatment. This not only helps the individual, but ultimately helps the success rate of the referring treatment facility. The panelists are all experienced presenters and will discuss their methods along with what works and what doesn't. They will talk about useful formats, both for long presentations and elevator speeches. That's Anna's department. They will also discuss the, of having real-time vacancy information for primary treatment providers and the recovery community. So I would like to read their bios now, and we're gonna do this a little different than normally because they're gonna share one um, PowerPoint. So I will introduce them all and read their bios, and then they will come up one by one. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end, and you need to step up to the microphone if you have any questions and then they will answer them as we go. And uh, bios, and I'm blind. Okay, so Mustafa Elias, Egyptian American with a sober date of 9-13-2017, joined Oxford House as a member in December of 2017 in Memphis, Tennessee. Moved to Chattanooga <laughs> in January of 2020 after getting hired as the Oxford House Reentry Coordinator for the State of Tennessee and Outreach for the Chattanooga area. In July of 2021, moved to Clarksville, Tennessee as the Outreach Coordinator for the area. Mustafa likes to cook Mediterranean food from his native country of Egypt and enjoys staying fit by going to CrossFit gym a few times a week. 
Welcome, Mustafa. <laughs> And Jackie Sledge is an outreach coordinator for Oxford House, Inc. in beautiful North Carolina. She has been working for Oxford House since 2014 when she relocated from New Jersey to Wilmington, North Carolina. In January 2021, Jackie packed up at the beach and moved to work in the Wake County area, serving 60 plus houses in that area. Welcome, Jackie. And Anna Mabel Jones, she has lots of letters behind her names. <laughs> Anna Mabel Jones, CPRS, NCPRSS, and Senior Resource Coordinator for Oxford House and Certified Core Engine and Energetics Practitioner. Anna radiates the power of recovery and transform transformation, working with community organizations and leaders to promote the so societal benefits of prevention treatment and recovery for substance abuse and mental illness, and as a wellness recovery action plan facilitator and CCAR recovery coach trainer. She created a 12-step Bible study called Life Recovery, and Anna is also a Reiki master teacher. Did I say that right this time? Yay, welcome Anna. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, we have James Alston. James got sober in San Antonio, Texas in 2014 and started working for Oxford House as an outreach worker in Texas in 2017. He worked in West Texas for a year and a half, then transferred to Arizona in 2019. He is now the Senior Outreach Coordinator for Arizona and New Mexico. Welcome, James. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna um, have Mustafa come up and start this presentation for y'all. Good morning, family. Good morning. Uh, let's start this here. And my name is um, Mustafa. I'm a person in long-term recovery. What that means for me is I have not uh, used any mind-altering substance since September 13, 2017. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but you guys, you guys heard about the Chinese philosopher Lorazio. He um, used to be a very famous uh, Chinese philosopher, and he, uh, he, uh, when he passed away, uh, you know, way over 100, 100 years, but he never said thank you in his life. Yeah, um, you know why? He didn't speak English. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, that's, you know. But I say, I say thank you, you know, from time to time. So, um, we're gonna be talking about presentations and, um, you know, first slide here is, why do we bother um, going and doing a good talk or, or presentation? I mean, what, why are we doing it? Um, first, um, you know, first impressions matter, of course. Um, that initial, um, impact or um, perception, you know, um, about the, about you is very important. Actually, um, it will govern your um, all the actions in the future, you know, in the negative or positive way. So it's just you treat it just like a, just like a job interview. I mean, you have to impress, and you have to uh, give a good first time impression. Um, especially when you go there for the first time to a treatment center or, or a correctional facility. Um, the second thing is um, you have something that they want and, and, and you have a lot that they want. I mean, they've been, they went to rehab or treatment facility looking for something. Um, and that's something you know, that you have, which is sobriety. Uh, they're all looking for sobriety. Uh, they're all looking to, uh, you know, get their life back on track, and 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 so that's 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 that should motivate you to uh, go and speak to them so they can actually learn about what you uh, what you accomplished. So um, 
Also, uh, one of the good things about doing a good talk is you're doing a great favor. You're helping to save lives. Um, you know, with this, uh, you know, with between the COVID-19 and uh, the increase of drug use and, and the type of drug use, drug types, you know, like fentanyl and all these kind of drugs, um, we're, we're losing a lot of lives, you know, for, you know, overdose and, and uh, you know, other illnesses right now, just like COVID, that's why we're wearing the masks all day. Um, but you are helping to save lives which is a great, great uh, achievement, really. Very rewarding kind of achievement. And you should know that, you know, with what you're doing, you know, you're helping a lot of people to stay alive. And also, it will help you sort out what you've done and understand it better yourself. One of the best things to, uh, to learn is really to teach yourself and to practice and repeat everything to yourself. That will help you actually, um, you know, um, know where, where you're at right now, what, what point in your life, and what, you're, um, what you achieved, and you can understand it better and learn from it, and even do better in the future. So it's a great thing actually to uh, be a presenter or, or uh, conduct a presentation because you learn from it just like, just like the people that you're presenting to. Um, the other thing is, which is a, an issue that we all share in all the states is the struggle of, of keeping the houses full. Um, <clears throat> especially with the, with the pandemic with the COVID and some other financial issues and people losing their jobs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we had some, a lot of state had some difficulty in keeping their houses full. Um, so one of the good things is when you do a presentation, you're doing it to a group of people that are probably gonna look for housing when they get out of treatment. So um, that's a great help to fill the vacancies um, that helped me, me personally, actually, um, um, right now I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee, but before Clarksville, I was in Chattanooga as, as Judy introduced me, I'm the reentry coordinator for the state of Tennessee. And, you know, I do presentations to correction facilities and jails and institutions like this. And, uh, and it, it helped me a lot with, uh, getting, um, residents or candidates um, to become residents or members of Oxford House through conducting presentations. Um, so that's, that's a great thing to focus on uh, to make sure that your houses are doing better so you can now open more houses in the future, fill out your houses and open more houses. This, and this is what we do. We open houses. So. Um, the other thing also is, it's a great service work. It's a great 12-step work. Um, all of us, of course, in Oxford are required to um, follow the the 12 steps and have a sponsor and home group and go to meetings and do all these kind of things. And also, we we do uh, we do service work. So part of doing presentations or going, you know, to treatment centers and and getting in touch with them is to uh, to do some uh, you know work that's going to make you feel good about yourself, you know. Um, and you can actually share this with your sponsor and and be proud of it, you know, that you uh, that you did this. Um, and again, um, and this goes with what what you what you did was with saving lives. Um, and that's also a, a very great 12-step work. Um, but presentations is one of the key factors of, uh, in Oxford House of, of actually getting uh, members. I mean, one of the things that we do at Oxford is we, we recruit people. And uh, 
And that's that's one of the best ways to do it. Um, the other way, of course, is, you know, we have the website. And people can actually go and look for vacancies and stuff and make phone calls. But when you actually go in person and meet them face to face, that's different. That's different. That makes a, a great impact. Of course, especially if you did a first, a good first impression, as we said. Um, I remember when I when I joined uh, Oxford House as reentry coordinator. Um, I went to my first um, uh, presentation at uh, Silverdale Detention Center in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I um, was kind of nervous. Uh, but I wanted to do a good job because this is my first presentation there. And um, and I went there and I, I spoke to the I spoke to the females that day. Um, we spoke separately to the females and males. So I spoke to the females and they had a lot of them in the room. They asked me a lot of questions and I answered, you know, the questions as much as I can. But I uh, I didn't feel that. I did as good as I should should do, and um, so I I started to practice and stuff, and I started to read and 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 learn from, you know, what I see and what other people are doing, and I uh, and I went back and I did a presentation to the men, and I and it was great, you know, um, everybody loved it. Um, I got a lot of uh, applications from. Both presentations, and I was able to fill up a couple of houses with uh, re-entry applicants. Um, so there's, there's other factors that actually we can include here to why you bother giving a good talk, but it's, uh, it's, all, it's all related to um, that first impression and first um, initial impression of your presentation and uh, so um, I would encourage everyone to you know be part of your you know presentation uh, the housing services committee and 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 be active on um, you know helping going to treatment centers and doing presentation because that's that helps everyone and by that being said I would like to introduce Jacqueline Good morning, everyone. Oh, no, that was really weak, guys. Good morning, everyone. Hey! <laughs> So, uh, my name is Jackie Sledge. I'm a woman in long-term recovery. What that means for me is I've not found it necessary to pick anything up uh, since May 2013. Oh, Mustafa, you coming in? Oh, there we go. See? So, uh, super grateful. I will tell you, um, when I first moved into Oxford House, um, I'm one of those uh, people in recovery from the outside that tried to maintain and make it look like I really knew what I was doing in active addiction. Like you weren't, you really weren't going to pull my card. Um, little did I know that everybody knew but me um, that that was the case. And, and part of that was going to school. And in, in college, I remember uh, I took public speaking. How many of you have taken public speaking? Yeah. I took it because I was no good at it, right? I was horrible at it. Uh, what I learned is that I, I'm still, in my head, no good at it. <laughs> uh, but somebody, just like in recovery, sees something in you that you may not see in yourself. And, um, you know, in recovery, we're taught to walk through the fear. And so this is kind of one of those steps. Um, I remember being interviewed to be an outreach coordinator and the uh, regional manager that was interviewing me at the time says, how are you with presentations? And I really wanted the job, so I was like, I'm great. 
Great. I do a great job of presentations. Mind you, I don't think I had done a presentation in a very long time. And he was like, okay. And, uh, and I moved from New Jersey to North Carolina and started to work under somebody who is a mentor to me today still. Um, and I watched and I paid attention. Um, and I observed and I kind of picked up cues. And then I kind of developed my own style, right? And I, wanna, there's, I didn't want to participate in like the cookie cutter presentation that should be. Um, you know, one of the reasons that I was asked to become an outreach coordinator and that what makes me a really unique person in Oxford House is that I'm me, right? Just like each of you is you. Um, and so we ask that you bring that to the table uh, when you do your presentations. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about characteristics of a good presentation because there is such a thing as much as I'd like to think there is not. Um, so we're gonna talk about dressing, right? So I'm up here and I'm feeling kind of dapper today. Uh, but I, I dress in, in my presentations based off of who I'm giving the presentation to, right? So there's a difference between when I go into a state agency or a correctional facility or I'm doing a presentation with the staff of a, maybe a new treatment facility um, versus going in and doing a presentation for the clients of that facility who may be looking to move into an Oxford house. They don't want to see me all dappered up, <laughs> right? But I don't, I, don't, I don't get to go in with the you know tank top and the short shorts and the uh, manicured toes out. I mean, you know, um, there's a, I always talk to people uh, and how many of you do this when you're having a conversation with somebody, you make sure you get to the eye level of that person. So I, I don't do well when I'm sitting down and someone's talking to me like this, cause you know, our literature talked about it. We have problems with authority. <laughs> And that feels authoritative to me. Um, so I like to sit down and have conversation. I do really well with one-on-one -on -one with people. Uh, but what I've learned is that um, it's really, really important to dress appropriately, right? Um, it makes a difference. You get this 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour session to make an impression, right? So I, I, either, I, either, I either do a really good job of it or I give this impression of like, hey, I don't want that. So, uh, and that makes a difference. When we talk about being brief and to the point, using keywords rather than long sentences, I'm, so, <laughs> fun fact, uh, one of my defects is being wordy, right? I learned that in recovery. I could be pretty wordy. I'm that person, and I, uh, this stems from school. I'm that person who, um, if you told me I had to have a thousand words in my, on my paper, I made sure I had a thousand words. In, it didn't make sense, but I had a thousand words on that paper, right? So I've learned to like make things concise and speak less and make what I have to say impactful and meaningful. Uh, that makes a difference. People pay attention to what you say in the very beginning and what you say at the very end. Those, for some, some reason, scientifically, that is what people pay attention to. So all that jargon in the middle, they're likely to lose it. So make those statements impactful. Um, if you're using a PowerPoint like this, uh, can we all give Mustafa a great hand for this PowerPoint? <laughs> he did amazing. Right? So Mustafa put this PowerPoint together and we all saw it and we were like, well, we don't need to, we don't need to have PowerPoints. You got this, bro. Uh, but he made this great PowerPoint and it makes a difference, right? Um, avoid trying to use too much in, in, in the slide, right? A, a lot of it, PowerPoints are meant to kind of remind you of what you're talking about, those key bullet points. They're not dissertations on a screen. Um, use large fonts. If you're the guy all the way in the back of the room, you want to be able to see the screen, right? It's important. Um, and color and illustrations, come on, how that's the first way we learn, right? If you think back to being a child, your books didn't have words. They had pictures and colors. So it's what grabs your attention as a human being. So 
Those things are very, very important. Using eye contact. I cannot emphasize this one enough. I don't know about you guys, but in active addiction, I always looked at the floor. I never wanted you to see my eyes. I never was able to look you in the face because there was so much guilt and shame involved in what I was doing. If I know anything today, I know some Oxford House, right? If you stay long enough, you learn some Oxford House. You learn the model and the structure and what we do and how we do it and the history of it. And you have the ability, eye contact is so important. You have the ability to tell the story just through your eyes. People can see it. I remember being in treatment and people coming in for a presentation and I couldn't tell you what I heard. Couldn't, I was too, still too sick. But what I remember is how they looked. I remember that they were smiling, which we can do today. I remember that they were engaging. They could look me in the eye and it made a difference. Um, those are the things that I remember during that presentation. So eye contact is really, really important. And eye contact tells you you're enough, man. Like I'm paying attention to you. You matter, you're important. Um, and practice. So I'll tell you a little bit about practice for me. In active addiction, if you came to my house, every mirror was turned around. I had, you could not see yourself in the mirror. They were all flipped because I hated looking at myself and what I had become. So, not to say that the mirror is my favorite thing today, but I don't have a problem looking in the mirror today, right? I'm proud of the woman that I've become. I'm a woman of dignity and grace today. I'm a woman who stands for something, right? So with that, I get this ability to practice. Um, I have practiced to the mirror, me, right? Uh, I used to get stuck in the mirror when I was high. <laughs> that was horrible, don't recommend that. Um, but I practiced, I practiced in the mirror. Um, anytime I do a new presentation using PowerPoints especially, uh, my wife goes, here we go. And I'm like, hey, you got five minutes. I just want to run this one by you real quick. And she's just like, OK. Um, I, you know, I practice to her. I've practiced to my sister. I've practiced with coworkers. Um, I've, I've, I've technology. Can we talk about technology for a second? So if, if, if the pandemic did anything for me, it made me a little more comfortable with technology. And it has all these really cool ways to like record yourself and play it back and see how you look and how you talk and how you speak and what you did with your hands. I'm pretty animated, so I use hands a lot. Um, but utilize those things. Use a roommate, right? I know you don't want to be that roommate, but use a roommate. Hey, you got five, 10 minutes or um, I love when I speak in a group and you get together beforehand and we go, okay, how are we going to break this down? And you play off of each other in that conversation. That's the stuff that is really, really important for me. Because again, I didn't necessarily always remember what they said, but I remember what they looked like and how they came across. And that was super important for me. Um, Anna is going to be coming up. She does really good with this whole elevator thing, man. She's got it down. <laughs> it's the strong suit. And that's the other part about uh, presentations. Know your strong suit, right? Know your weaknesses and know your strengths. It's okay because we all have both. Learn that one real quick too. Uh, but you can play off of those things, especially if you're in like team setting like this. Um, so I'm going to pass the floor to Ms. Anna Maple Jones. Oh boy, yay, I get to take the mask off. Ooh. Oh, breathe, breathe, right? So good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. 
And thank you so much for getting up this early, 8.15. We were on sitting over here talking, and we're like, this is the crew. They come to really learn and take some stuff back. When you get up at 8.15 and you come to learn about, you know, conducting an Oxford House presentation, right? Yeah. So let me introduce myself. My name is Anna, and I'm a woman in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is I haven't used a drink or a drug since August the 30th, 1999. Yeah. Yes. And let me tell you something, all right? I have to share this. It's my birthday, too. So people are like, wow, you surrendered on your birthday? And I'm like, yeah, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I was like, I'm going. So I have two, two, two things that I celebrate on that day, right? Um, and because of that, I am a mother today. I'm a wife. Um, I'm an organizer, I'm an advocate for recovery. Um, I'm not afraid to share my truth today because it's so freaking freeing to me, right? To just live today. Um, and that's because of recovery. So I'm so honored to be here and just honored to be here with this awesome panel. You know, and again, thank you, Mustafa, for getting that PowerPoint together. Yes. Okay. So. We talk a little bit about, let me see, let me make sure I have the buttons here to push. Yeah, I need a little help, stop. I need a little help. Yeah, and I can ask for help today, right? Because I don't know everything. You know, I want to stay green. I don't want to be like, oh, I got this, right? So I always remember that, too. I want to stay humble. And that's important when you're coming into a presentation, too. Um, so we talk, I want to just, we're not going to talk too much about the elevator speech in this because we have a PowerPoint. But if you don't know, the elevator speech is something where if you're on an elevator with someone and you have to tell them about Oxford House from up and down the elevator, right? You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to do that in less than probably a minute? Right? And you're on the elevator and you're trying to get some fundraising done for, <laughs> for your house or get some donations, you know, um, get to sit with that person to maybe get a contract or, you know, just help somebody in your house, you know. So that's what it is. And it's important for us to know that. Hey, my name is Anna. I'm a woman in recovery. I work for this awesome um, agency. You know, we've been around since 1975 and we save lives. Can, you know, can I set a date with you to come and talk to you more about Oxford House? Boom. Here's my card. Hello. We're done, right? Okay, you know, or can I have your card? You see what I'm saying? Right, and we need to be able to do that. And we can do that just in life. Um, well, we're not afraid to share who we are. That's what I love about Oxford House and that's what presentations are about, right? We're not afraid to share. I know it's an anonymous program, but Oxford House is not anonymous. So let me get that out of the way, right? So when we're sharing, um, we bring ourselves. Um, Jackie and I were just talking. We were like, ooh, this is deep. And I just said to her, I said, I'm going to share from my heart, right? Because in Oxford House, it's real. We have to talk about ourselves. And it's OK to talk about ourselves today. We're doing some awesome freaking things, you know? And people need to know that, right? We're, we're peer to peer. People need to know that. And that's what we do, right? That's how, again, we talked about it, Mustafa, that's how we keep our houses full. But really, that's how we grow in recovery, right? That's how we help ourselves even more. Because really, it helps us more than it helps anybody, right? So you have the outreach worker, or the resource coordinator talking about, you need to get to some presentations. Your house is not full. <laughs> I know I say that in my area a lot. We need to do more presentations, right? Um, there's no reason, you know, why our houses aren't full. But it's not just to keep your houses full. It is to get the word out about Oxford House. People need to know we're evidence-based. We're saving lives. It's nothing out there like Oxford House. And no one can talk about it but us. Nobody can talk about Oxford House unless you've lived in an Oxford House, right? So we're the ones who do that thing, right? And we do it good because we don't have to come in. It's no fake stuff. Everything is already done. We're evidence-based. You know, we're going to say, I live in an Oxford house, and my house is da 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 da, da. You know? You know, what is your house doing? Because you're connected in that house. So a typical presentation outline, um, introduce yourself, right? 
And it, again, we talked about where, where is it at? Where would you, you know, introduce yourself at, right? A lot of times I say, you know, I'm a woman in long-term recovery. Now, if I'm, if I'm in, you know, you may want to say, you know, I'm, I'm in and I'm an addict. But for me, I say it when I'm in rooms of Narcotics Anonymous or when I'm in an AA meeting, but when I'm going to do a presentation, I normally say, hi, my name is Anna. I'm a woman in long-term recovery, especially if I'm presenting to the providers or something like that, you know? Um, so it is different the way you want to introduce yourself, but you definitely want to introduce yourself and, and hope, don't be afraid to say, you know, how much clean time you have, you know, something about your house. That's important. You're, you, you're sharing of yourself in an Oxford House presentation. And sometimes it's hard for us to talk about ourselves, right? It took me a while to be one, I don't want to tell them about me. Ooh, I don't know if I can do that, you know. But really, I'm telling you, once you start, it's going to be so easy, Right? Let the crowd know that you're in recovery. Um, show um, the Oxford House video. How many of you all still show the Oxford House video? Raise your hand, be honest. Because I know sometimes we can get like, oh, I'm so tired of watching that video, right? Yeah, we can get that, but that is, remember, it's not about us. It's about the people seeing it, right? Okay, so we remember that. And then some states have done their own video. We were blessed in the District of Columbia to do our own little video to take the presentations, right? So we show that sometimes because it talks more about, you know, D.C. and what's happening there and the opioid epidemic. Um, but we um, always make sure we show it along with the 60-minute video, right? And you all can get creative with the video thing. You know, I've seen houses do this, and I'm like, wow, that's cool. I wish I would have thought about that years ago when I lived in an Oxford house. But they video on their phone, right? And um, just a quick thing, hey, because um, it's when you do a house video, because you can do a house video. I mean, you can do a house presentation. You can do a chapter presentation. So it's different ones you're doing it to, right? But they introduce themselves, right? They show and then they're showing that video. Hey, come to our house. You know, we can get creative with it, right? In today's time. So think about that. And then share a brief, um, brief, briefly share your story, right? And this is the awesome thing when you're doing a presentation. So for me, I feel like H and I saved my life when I was in treatment. You know, if they didn't come in and bring NA and AA in and talk about, you know, what was out there when I left treatment and how, you know, they got through, I don't know if I really would have made it, right? So we get the opportunity to do something like that, right? To go in and share our story, but we're sharing our Oxford House story, you all. We can get into what we did and all of that, but you still want them to hear how's the Oxford House living going for you. So when you share your story, please make sure you're putting your Oxford House story in there too, right? And that's just real, that's just showing up. Hey, I've been in a house for a month and it's been great for me, you know? Um, I went to a chapter meeting. Just talk about you. Recovery is good. Once we're in recovery, it's okay, right? Talk about success rate and history of Oxford House in your state. Wow, believe me, you all have some awesome outreach coordinators that can get you the history, the numbers, and all of that good stuff. You also have the awesome Oxford House website, www.oxfordhouse.org, right? And they have all of this information about DePaul and, and the studies. And most likely, because if you're here, I know your outreach workers probably had you do the survey, right? So once that survey is done, it's an awesome report with information just about your state. And normally, it's posted on the website. So again, boom, you have the information, right? You can post that in the presentation, or you can take it with you. Know, if you're presenting to um, treatment provider or you know state or something, you want to do a packet. So you have, and you can always get that. Um, your chapter may have it, or again, your um, resource or your outreach coordinator. But you want to put a packet together, right, with some of the brochures, some of the information, and you want to give it to them. If you're um, presenting to um, clients or people who are, you know thinking about it, you want to make sure you have a list of houses with vacancies, because sometimes people in treatment centers can't get on the www, you know, oxfordhousevacancies.com. What? How awesome is that? We need to use that. Remember that. That's the thing. You know, Oxford is doing the thing. A lot of it is already done. So really, you're just showing up, right? You are showing up. Oxford has already done everything for you, and you're being of service. We talked about that, how awesome, you know, being of service is because it helps us even more, right? So all of that is there for you. Um, go over the Oxford, how, how Oxford House works. We even have a pamphlet, how Oxford House works. 
If you're on, I'm telling you, this is how easy it is, right? And how sweet it is, right? Go over how, uh, you can just read it, right? If you don't want to be like, oh, I got to get, um, get the brochure and be like, oh, let me read this for you. And then talk more about it, what you just read and how it works for you, right? So we have that where you can do it that way. If you're, if you're a little nervous, okay, well, I'll just read it, right? Get that brochure and read it that way. It'll help. Um, hand out literature. So major. A lot of states have their own brochures, so you want to make sure if you do um, have your brochures or something like that, that is done. People love literature. They love to read. Even though we're in technology, oh, go online. I, I'm, I'm old school. I want to read it, right? So I still pass off the literature. <laughs> um, and then open up for questions, right? So you want to open up for questions. Um, and I forgot that I still, I need you to push it one more time for me to stop you for the next one. I don't, he's got this fancy computer up here and mine is like, click, click, click. What? Okay. There you go. All right. So, um, you always want to leave time for questions, right? Okay. Other things to consider. Judy, how much time do I have? Don't want to go over. You're good. Okay. Thank you. So other things to consider, right? So, um, oral communication is different from written communication. Oh my goodness, yes, right? Totally. So you don't want to assume that they're the same. Keep it simple and focus on key points. So again, it really matters um, who are you presenting to. You know, well, we're, we're keeping it simple. And when you're calling, so this is the thing too. So when you're calling, you know, you're, you're scheduling it. You know, for me, I like to call and schedule presentations in the evening, you know, when things are like, and I'm talking treatment centers, right? Um, so I like to call in the evening when things are sort of like relaxed and I can talk to a counselor or something and they're going to go, okay, we can talk and I like to tell them who we are and I like to schedule it then, right? And most of the time I would present to the um, providers first and then do a monthly thing where I'm presenting to the clients or something like that, all right? So I get in there with them so then they know, they know us and everything. And at chapter meetings, I'm always like, what treatment center did you come from? You know, because we want to bring people back so that they can see how successful people are doing in Oxford houses, right? You should be the one coming back to that treatment center you were from presenting on Oxford House so they can see that at work. And they're like, wow, one of our people, they're doing awesome. You know, you should be the one. If it's a draw court presentation, right? If it's a veterans presentation, if it's a reentry presentation, it is so many people that we can present to in this, okay? So it's not just treatment centers, it's so many. You know, if it's a women's facility, oh my God, mental health, sometimes people, mental health is there and they can be stable and live in an Oxford house if they're taking their medications right and they're in recovery too, right? So it's so many things, you know, that we can present to. So don't limit yourself in that. Be sensitive to your audience, of course. We want to know who we're presenting to, and we want to be prepared um, when we come to present to them. Being prepared means how much time am I going to have to present? Do they have, um, you know, audio where I can show the video? You know, if I can't show the video, can I hook up my laptop to something? Um, some places aren't able to do that, um, some of the things we've talked about, so you may have to change how you're going to do it. And you want to explain, for, for I like... Um, for me, I'm, I'm like, I'm visual, right? So I like to know what's going to happen before it happens. So normally when I'm doing a presentation, I'm going to say, hey, this is how we're going to do it. So blank, blank, blank's going to talk, right? And then we're going to let them know, and we're going to do such and such, and afterwards we'll answer any questions for you. So then you're not all over the place in it. You've already said how it's going to look, how we're going to kick this hour off, right? What, how we're going to do it. You know, people love that. Then they're prepared, they're ready, right? So that's being sensitive to your audience and respecting um, the people who are there. Some talk may need to be adjusted for a different audience. We, we talked about that, right? Because there's so many different people that we can present to. Um, and some of them I probably haven't tapped into. I know I mentioned a couple, right? But there are so many agencies that need to know about Oxford House and the wonderful things we do. Right? So it doesn't, and I say that to say it just doesn't have to be the people just trying to fill your house, right? It can be the, um, you know, your, your, I, another thing, we, we do presentations in um, my area to our council members, right? Because they need to know that we're the ones we're leading and all of that. You know, so when I talk about advocacy and organizing, 
We need to be at the table. Nothing for us without us. How about that? Nothing for us without us. So don't talk about recovery housing and Oxford House is not at the table. What? We need to be at the table, because who better to talk about it than us? Nothing for us without us, right? That's real. That's, that's real, real. So that lets us know in this, in this presentation world that we need to be at the table, right? For any of that. You know, um, presentations to your community. We talk about NIMBY, not in our neighborhood. I've learned that when they have like, um, what do you call it? When it's a council, if you're in a neighborhood and, and you have to, you know, um, be on the board when they have the community meetings, somebody from my house is going to be there. And we're not going to go, oh, we need to talk rockets. And I said, we're going to know what's happening. You know, and if they do have people who present, they're going to know about that, right? So we can do that also, right? Because nothing for us without us. So we're a part of all of that. Um, make the audience want to learn, right? So in making them want to learn, there are questions that we can ask them. Hey, you know, who's getting out soon? <laughs> right? So we can know, OK, let's work with this person, because as soon as they get out, you know, we may need to work with them. So there are different questions that we want to ask um, the audience to. So be prepared for that, right? Um, let's see. Handling Q&A is as important as the formal talk itself. Wow, Mustafa, that is so freaking, yes. So you want to leave that time for the Q&A, right? And sometimes silence is good. So don't be like, ah, you know, you, you've put it out there. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> and then no one answers the question, right? Just have a question to put out there for them, right? So that's what I do. But then sometimes silence is good because it gives us a moment to just reflect, right? And sometimes people can't even sit in silence. I've learned to, because even at a meeting, I'm like, oh, it's too quiet. Oh, I got to share. I can't, I can't deal with the quietness. Instead of being like, no, it's OK to just, right, to be. Um, and, and that's something to work on. But also have questions um, for, for the um, participants, just in case, because some people are afraid to ask. So you know, say, you know, I have a question for you. Have, have it been, any of you ever lived in an Oxford house? Hey, I have a question for you. Um, what are you going to do when you get out? Hey, I have a question for you. I know I was in New York, the same seat you're in, um, and I was always so nervous. Do you, do you get nervous when, you know, when you're here, you know, or um, I'll be a question for you. I'll be here afterwards if you want to come and talk to me. You know, all of those things. Just picture yourself. There you go. Picture yourself, right? When you were there exactly where they are. And don't be afraid either when you're going into these big places, you know, with people with all these things behind their names and all of that stuff. They need to know who we are, right? Yeah. Don't even be like, oh, I can't speak because they're going to. No. We're the best people to speak in front of them and present in front of them, right? And those are the ones that need to know about Oxford House and what we're doing, right? We have all the literature. You know, we bring ourselves and we talk um, for ourselves. And if you're afraid, Jackie talked about it. Yeah. Uh, come here. Come here, hubby. Give me five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, and let's let, let me talk because I'm nervous, right? And I need to, you know, get it out. And that's good, and that's something for you to do with your house members. Presentations, your whole house can go to the presentation, and you can do certain things, right? Each chapter should always have, you know, um, your housing service committee. That is part of what um, the housing service committee chairs are supposed to do. If you're reading your manual and your chapter manual, it talks about that, right? So you should have a committee for that. And know now that a lot of um, new treatment centers are popping up, new things in drug court, new things in reentry. And they're like, they don't know about Oxford House. And I'm like, because we think like, oh, they, they gonna know about Oxford House. No, new things are happening. Changes are happening. So we have to be there for the change. We have to step up to all these awesome new things um, that are, especially in the, with the opioid epidemic, right? People are getting creative, and that's awesome, but we need to be at the table. Nothing for us without us, right? So we need to just be there and be like that quick, oh, hey, you know, or pre a presentation, too, can be over the phone. Boom. It does not have to be in person. So sometimes you might just be sitting at your house and be like, hey, 
I need to make some calls and my presentation is just gonna be with voice today, right? So don't just think it has to be that face-to-face -face because we're dealing with COVID, right? So we have to get creative. Oh my God, yeah, let's talk about that. Because for the last year, we probably haven't even been able to do many presentations, yeah. So let's bring that in. So really getting creative and doing some things differently, right? Video, oh my God, Zoom. So I don't know if that's in the present, but hopefully someone's gonna get up and talk about how we've been doing presentations on Zoom because that's been a lot of what's happening, right? And we've been getting it done. So let's not forget that. So the Zoom, Zoom has been totally helpful with that presentation piece. We have been really using it in my area and it's really been helpful. And they're like, oh, thank you so much Oxford House for coming. You know, we needed this. Can we do this more? Um, and we're doing it. We're still doing the monthly things with Zoom, right? And we're still being able to show a video. We're still being able to let people tell their story, you know, giving everybody some time. And also people like to, and I'm, I'll end with this, also when you're giving a presentation, don't let it just be about, you know, them learning about Oxford House. We wanna learn about what they, they do too, right? When you're presenting to like an agency or a provider or something. Okay, we've sent a, could you tell us a little bit about what you do? And I like to always come out with a solution, right? Um, if it's not, you know, just to get someone in a house, but in the learning, it's like, well, how can we connect as agencies? You know, what can we do? If I'm presenting to a, oh my God, Oxford House and Churches, right? That pamphlet, right? So if I'm presenting to um, a community of, of faith leaders, you know, so I want to get a solution afterwards, you know, well, how can we partner? What, what is the partnership going to be, right? Okay, because they might not have people, but they may have food, right? Or they may have clothing, right? Or they may be an agency with jobs. So boom, they want to, I present to them too, right? As a resource code, hey, can I do an Oxford House presentation, right? So then they're like afterwards, well, how can we help and what can we do? But I also say, well, how can Oxford House help? Because we have people who may want to volunteer. We have people who, so it's a connection, you know, right there where you're connecting in that way. So my name is Anna Jones. Thank you for letting me share. <laughs> And I am going to turn it over to James. Rocket James. <laughs> All right, that's good. So hi family, my name is James Alston. I'm a person in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is I haven't found it necessary to pick up a drink or a drug since February 26, 2014. And these people right here on the panel, Jackie, Anna, Judy, these were my mentors. These were people I looked up to when I would come to these world conventions. Been coming since 2014. And so I want to talk a little bit of how to improve your presentation skills. Because if you knew me in 2014, I was way in the back in this corner. <laughs> and I would not talk. And if you know me today, I don't shut up. <laughs> but one of the things that Oxford House taught me how to have is a voice. And using that voice to help other people's lives get saved by Oxford House. So I was that person in that, that corner, and I really wanted to help save the lives of the people that, like, just like these people were doing. And I never in my life thought I would be standing up here today. So one of the things that my outreach worker and you know these people told me to do was read the manual. <laughs> so I have a question for you. How many of you read the Oxford House Manual? I love yeah. it, yes. Woo. You know how to feel confident about giving a presentation about Oxford House? Knowing the manual. You read that Oxford House Manual? You read Tradition 8, it tells you exactly how you're supposed to present the concept without personality, strictly principle. Principles before personality in Oxford House is what saved my life. Absolutely saved my life. My house held me accountable when I had two years sober. A group of, 30, a group of people with less than 30 days said, hey, you're messing up. 
So I'm very grateful for the principles that are taught in Oxford House because Oxford House taught me how to be a man in recovery today. So how do you improve your presentation? Know the Oxford House model, teach and share your story, practice. It's been set up here a lot. I am so grateful that I have people in my life that value my life more than my friendship, that will sit down and give me constructive criticism when I need it. So I take notes of effective speakers and adopt their successful habits. One of my mentors, Judy Maxwell, Jackie, Anna, been watching Anna for years, Jackson Longin. And I, look, I, I watch his Four Stages, Five Core Principles presentation to learn about Oxford House on YouTube on repeat. And he would say, he does not know how to pay back the debt that he has from Oxford House, but he chooses to pay it forward. So why we're all here today and why we're all learning how to give presentations is because we want to save some lives. Can we agree with that? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're that, that person sitting in the back room not really knowing if you can really get up here and have and share your experience, strength, and hope, you absolutely can. I believe in you. We all believe in you. So making the appointments to schedule these presentations. I don't know about you, but I was scared to death to pick up that phone. When I got the job as an outreach worker and I moved from my home state or my hometown of San Antonio and was moved to West Texas, they put me in a hotel room and they said, okay, open some houses. I was scared to death. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And so getting on the phone, I didn't know who to call. So get to know the contact people at the treatment centers. I really love what Anna said, like, you know, the nothing for us without us. There's a lot of coalitions. That's how you'll get to know these, con these treatment centers and the contact people at them. So when you pick up the phone, and you want to schedule a presentation, you know who you're supposed to talk to so that receptionist doesn't, doesn't give you the runaround. So get to know the contact people at the treatment center. One of the things that I would do is I would bring them coffee. They really <laughs> like coffee. I would also bring them um, some cookies, some things that uh, you know they like. I got to know them, so I would find out what they're favorite cookie was and their, uh, their favorite drink at Starbucks was and I'd bring it to them. So then they would be willing to set those presentations up. So I, I really was intimidated about doing this. But one thing that you need to remember is that you're helping change and save lives through your stories and through your voice. So don't be afraid, just pick up the phone, talk to the CEO, because you have just as much of, of just as much important things as they got going on in their life to be able to help in the world. Dress nice, oh, get with the Oxford House Reentry Coordinator and contact prisons and jails. They need, we need more Oxford House members um, from the prison and jail reentry programs. We have, we have some of the best success rates in the nation. And um, about 78% of our uh, membership is from, has gone to prison or jail. So if you have that experience and your life has been sh changed by Oxford House, get into these jails and share that story. Show up, dress nice, show off, look like you're sober. Don't show up to the presentation looking like you still are drinking or using. <laughs> so dress nice and show off. And then let them, know, let them want what you have achieved. Let them want what you have achieved. Tell them. So for me, Ox, I, grew up, I grew up in Oxford House. Oxford House taught me how to be a man. I have my apartment today that I actually use the viability calculator 
to uh, budget my, my own expenses. That's good. That's good. And I use, like, my first car in recovery, I use those comptroller reports to show good payment history. So you might not feel like what you're doing in here in your Oxford house is, is, is uh, you know, is going to really have a, a huge impact, but it is. It absolutely, it, it absolutely is. And so when we're at these treatment centers sharing our, sharing our stories with these clients, let them want what you have achieved. So tell them all your success stories. Tell them what you've got going on. All right, so um, what time, where are we at? minutes for questions. I would love for us to just get into some questions and answers because um, that's how we find out how to give good presentations, right? Hearing from these amazing people. All right. Thank you. Can we hear? Oh, that's some powerful stuff that they just shared with y'all. Give them all a, another round of applause. They did a great job. Thank you, Mustafa, Jackie, Anna, and James. And if you have questions, please line up at the microphone, and um, I will have you step up, and then we will have the panelists answer your questions. Um, so I had two questions real quick. Um, what is your main selling point when you go to organizations that fo don't focus on recovery to um, build that partnership? Okay. Hello? Ooh, great. <laughs> All right. So. Um, you, thank you. That's an awesome question because you do want to go outside the people that don't do recovery. It is the main thing is to let them know about Oxford House, what Oxford House does, you know, how we work. Um, and then you want to connect on that level because it just doesn't have to be an organization that deals with recovery. You know, community organizations are popping up all over. So you want to let them know about Oxford. You want to do a different pamphlet, right? You, you want to take different pamphlets. If you look on our website, there are so many different pamphlets that you can print, you know, out to have to go to that presentation. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the other question was, can we hear an elevator speech? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, we did. sure, let's see. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Anna, what's your name? What's oh, your name? Christina. <laughs> hi, <laughs> Tina. Um, we're here, you know, at the Oxford House World Convention, you know, and we're focusing on our theme. And I was just hoping that I could get with you to tell you about the awesome things that Oxford House does. We save lives one day at a time. Is that okay? Can I get your card and maybe call and schedule an appointment? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Anna. Well, my name is Kevin. I'm from Oklahoma. Um, we have a pretty wonderful storm happening in our, in our region. Where we're, we have a company that works with us, uh, and if there's two men standing there and one of us from Oxford House, this company is willing to hire the, our guys first. We're putting, the, we're putting together really great numbers for, for retention and stuff. And so my question is, it, do you have any pointers as far as going to companies and presenting yourself to a company. I'm not talking about a presentation to an outreach, I mean to a, to a crisis unit. I'm talking about to a company for hiring uh, perhaps Oxford House initially or, or giving them priority. Do you understand the question? Does that sound good? Absolutely. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Is that a thing? <laughs> Because it's happening, uh, we're, we're getting it done, but I don't know what. So you're talking about going to companies, not treatment centers, to uh, uh, present to them? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Uh, now, what's to a what's, your, what's mm -hmm. your purpose? Excuse me. What's the purpose of presenting to companies? The purpose. Uh, I, I want Oxford Hiring? House, Oxford House residents, to have uh, not priority, but but to have uh, a higher percentage of being hired. Our numbers tend to, to produce uh, workers that, re, that are retained longer and re return to work. I don't know what it is, if, it, if, if it's because of our recovery or, or because uh, it's a corner piece to our puzzle, but we, we come back to work more than, than that, like say uh, temp services or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. I mean, almost twice yeah. the rate. So I, I'm wondering, do y'all, have you ever had a package that you put together to present Oxford House to a company to, to give y'all preference over, yeah, over hiring, hiring. We, we can definitely present to anybody. 
you know? Right, right, okay. You can do it to a company. Get with your outreach worker in the state, and they can put together something. Let me just say, um, as a resource coordinator, I do it all the time, right? right because right. trying to help someone get a job. So the basic thing, when you're, if you're do, dealing with employment, you want to talk to the person who is the hiring manager, Correct. and you want to call and say, hey, I'm with Oxford House, for me, hey, I'm with Oxford House, I'm the resource coordinator, I'd like to um, have a meeting with you and talk about um, how we can connect. Um, I have some people who would be great for your company. Um, you know, they're in recovery and they're getting the lives right. back together. Yes, right. all the time. When, I mean, that's the blessing of Oxford House now. Some states have resource coordinators, some don't, but that's my main thing, it's like calling hiring managers, right. posting jobs. But I'm, I let them know about the agency and I'm like, Oh my God, then I let them know about me. I introduce myself. I'm a woman, 22. Oxford House saved my life, right? right? And you do it just like that. You bring yourself. Um, there's a lot of literature. What state are you from? Oklahoma. Oh yeah, you all got yeah. some bomb literature. Absolutely. You all got a video just about your houses. Thank you. You yeah. know, yes. So yeah, you do that. Claremont. That's yeah. who you go to, but that's what I'm talking about, like outside, and okay. they love it. And then you have that connect, and when people come in, it's like, you know, hey, we have somebody. And then I, I can easily, I have like three agencies I can call, and I'm like, hey, I have a young lady who just moved in. You know, she has some awesome administrative skills. Would you, can she come in an interview? And then I prepare for the interview. Right? Yeah, we, we oh, can't yeah, guarantee definitely. Them a job. We can't guarantee them a job, but we guarantee them an in interview when they come to our house. Yeah, but you want to work it, you know, to the point of where you're not afraid exactly. to go and present to those companies. Thank you very that much. That was a good question. Little, per little person here. Um, okay, so I have a question about presenting to faith-based organizations. So there are a lot of those where I live in Mobile. And um, when I first came there and I wanted to set up presentations with the first outreach worker that was there, they told me, you're not getting in. And this is my outreach worker telling me this. She is not there now, but um, <laughs> she has tried. She, she's a, still an outreach worker and she's, you know, she's servicing another area, but she did, she has tried uh, valiantly to get in uh, uh, to these, because uh, she's a hard worker, to get into these faith-based organizations to set up presentations and they're like if it ain't jesus you ain't telling it to our people um go to the church go to the church become a member of that church i am a member of end. my own church already uh by my own preference i'm not going to another church um mm -hmm. i'm kind of loyal to my own church but <laughs> i have no problem going into other churches and uh -huh. talking to other people and you know Connecting with them, whatever. Yeah. I have a very wide variety of uh, religion in my family. Some are mm -hmm. Catholic, some are atheists, some are uh, Jewish. And so, not a small percentage, but uh, <laughs> on my dad's side. But um, I, they just, they're not hearing it. Yeah. They're not hearing it. You, you, not. you may get four no's for every one yes. So just keep trying. Just keep being persistent and, and pray about it. Because we, we have women that come in from these faith-based organizations that came in on their own and had to do their own research, but, like, they're making mm. it. They've been there eight, ten months now in my house, and uh, yeah. but, like, I just can't get in. Wow. I, I feel like I have it easy as far as the churches go in my area because we have a few recovery churches that I belong to. Yeah. So, I mean, recovery is first and foremost, and they are totally open to hearing about Oxford House and helping us out. So just keep looking around. I mean, you don't have to necessarily go and become a member, but just check those churches well, out. Well, they're like faith-based Any... inpatient rehabs oh, as well. Okay. They're connected to a church, you know, to different churches, mm -hmm. but these inpatient rehabs, they're, they're not letting you in. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Um, yeah. uh, in my area in Clarksville, Tennessee, um, I was actually able to get in contact with one of the churches, and we started doing a 12-step Bible-based study. Okay. And that's how we got through them. All right, I can do that. And that helped a lot. So they started calling me after that with, you know, residents and candidates and stuff like that, and we had a very good relationship okay. with them there. So that's, that's something you might want to do and approach them from that side, you know? So I I like that. Okay. Yeah. We have five minutes. Okay. I'll keep this brief. Hi, I'm Cassie, uh, Wisconsin, Chapter Three, Milwaukee County. 
And I just got, I would just like some general tips on overcoming stage fright and being afraid of presenting in front of crowds because I know what I'm talking about. And I'll have an idea, a great presentation idea, whatever. But then as soon as I get in front of that crowd, my mind goes blank, I freeze, <laughs> I can't get nowhere. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> I was literally just about to say, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but like any good tips on like pushing through that, getting it done and sounding confident and pro professional despite that? You know what's really cool is that you're doing it now and you don't yeah. even know that. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. You are absolutely doing it now. And you, you, you didn't. Sometimes, and this is what I was talking about earlier, is that we are our biggest critics, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I remember being like absolutely terrified and going like completely blank. Uh, one of the things that I tend to do when I'm, I know maybe I'm going behind before, uh, you know, uh, people who I'm not familiar with or don't necessarily feel comfortable presenting to is like, I'll take some key notes. Sometimes I'll just write a word on the paper, a couple words, and it'll trigger what I want to talk about. Mm. Um, that seems to be pretty good for me. Um, along with I kind of vibe off of what is being put out there as well. So if you have people who are coming up asking questions, I'm like, cool, you asked the question. I think we can find the answer. Um, be yourself. Thank you. Be yourself. If I could give you anything, be yourself. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. My name is uh, Myron. I'm a recovering uh, cross-addictive uh, alcoholic problem drinker, and I represent Garner House, uh, North Carolina, Chapter 1. <laughs> Woo -woo. Garner in the house. Uh, Reentry pro uh, uh, program, reentry gentleman, Mustafa. I have found that in reaching out and returning calls at my house uh, that a lot of times when I get the counselors, they, it's over their head. You know, the home programs are like two weeks out. So, you know, I contact Jason whenever I, I you know, that's our, our guy. Uh, whenever, you know, I get letters or whatever from different individuals. Uh, but what I find when I contact the different counselors at the different institutions, and this is not only in this state, it's other states in the, within the United States. They are very vague, and some of them don't even know in my home state what Oxford House is all about. Uh, I'm not saying they're not doing their job because I was fortunate enough uh, to uh, put forth the effort uh, to uh, uh, come to an Oxford House. Uh, and it's part the individual's fault, but I find from communication with those uh, incarcerated inmates and the employees that it's like vague. I mean, they, well, I really didn't know, you know, and it, it, we have yeah. an excellent uh, uh, person at- Yeah, North Carolina is, uh, they, they had one of the best re-entity programs in the nation, who's Oxford House. They're huge. They have a lot of re-entity personnel that works for them and they do the entry only, mm -hmm. but it's a big state. Yes, it's a huge yes, state. I agree. And we have an excellent uh, gentleman. Uh, I'm sure I saw him yesterday. Yes, I did talk to him. Uh, he works with the North Carolina Department of Corrections, Curtis Taylor. Mm -hmm. I think he is still involved, uh, and he's helped me out a lot. And thank you uh, for the uh, introductions, and uh, see you guys. You're uh, welcome. Thank you. Okay, we have about two minutes, so the last two step up and we'll try to get you taken care of and your questions answered. Hi, I'm Lauren. Um, I'm a recovering addict and I'm from Oxford House Stancil in Chapter 2, Florida. Hi, um, welcome. My question to you is, um, I'm a presentations officer in my chapter and um, most of us haven't gone to Oxford from hugging puppies and being the best person when we were in our addiction. <laughs> um, I'm a violent felon, I'm on probation, and um, I'm hitting some red tape on being able to do presentations, not only because of my record, but because of COVID. And I'm just kind of wondering if you have any tips on how to maneuver through some of those situations. If in your experience, drug courts are 
willing to work with someone that's still on paper or if maybe talking to my probation officer would help. I don't really think she would care as far as helping me with anything other than putting me in jail if I messed up, but um, <laughs> which would probably be helpful if I messed up, but. So I would just have a conversation with them and see what hoops I would have to jump through in order to be able to do the presentation. Okay. Like whatever that would look like. Is it, can we do it virtually? Mm -hmm. Can I do it on Zoom? I mean, uh, that's what I would do. Like if I had some challenges on my, in my space, that's how I, would, how I would fix it. It's just find out what hoops I gotta jump through. Yep. Remember, you're not alone. You don't have to do it alone. So get a team, right? That's major. Get a team, you know, and you all map out a plan and get it done. It sounds like you're determined and you're ready to do it and you're going to make it happen. So I look forward to hearing. I'm going to check. What, um, who's your outreach worker? Um, Lindsay is, but she actually put her resignation in. Um, okay, no, but I'm sure um, that one of them can help you make it happen too, right? So get connected in that way. And congratulations for being here. Thank yeah, you. good luck with that too. Hello, I'm Natasha, and I am the outreach worker for Colorado Springs Chapter 8, 12, and 4. Hi, um, Natasha. <laughs> hey, so, I, um, so that was kind of similar to my question, but um, more so with um, COVID um, and the um, not traveling thing and I'm I can't make things personal and I can't take coffee and so what is the best way as being a new outreach worker to connect with my community zoom <laughs> yeah so uh for me it's been zoom uh I've been zooming with a lot of people um I will follow up after that as well um I may not be able to bring you the coffee but I might be able to have the coffee brought to you yeah. ah. with mm -hmm. a little, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes <laughs> it's like you gotta get a little creative. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've done that before. I've had donuts dropped off and um, I've also followed up with the phone call. Um, I have actually met someone outside in the parking lot because I can't go in the building. Um, so I've had like one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone in the parking lot, like a counselor or something that I've been working with in regards to like someone we've been trying to get into a house. Um, so, and a lot of them are doing community outreach as well. Um, so for example, I have a, a, we have a program in Wake County called Healing Transitions um, that does a multitude of things, but they do some outreach as well. And sometimes he'll call me and I'll say, well, where are you at? And I'll meet him and I'll meet the person that he's getting before they even go into treatment. And I'm like, Hey, I'm your, I'm your second step, but he's your first step connect with him. And then you're going to connect with me afterwards. And just that little bit of, uh, connection is, seems to be pretty, pretty cool. And they always obviously appreciate the donuts and the coffee and stuff. <laughs> always think outside the box. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Natasha. All right, once again, thank you panelists for a great hour and 15 minutes and uh, enjoy the rest of the convention. <laughs>